the words of him, Jesus Christ, who holds the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your deeds, church. You got this reputation of being alive. Woo-hoo! But you are dead. Wake up. Number one, strengthen what remains and is about to die. Because I've not found your deeds complete in the sight of my God. Two, remember, therefore, what you've received and heard. And three, obey it and repent. But here's the point. If you do not wake up, if you do not wake up, I'll say that three times for emphasis. If you do not wake up, I, Jesus, Jesus speaking, I'm going to come upon you, church, like a thief. And in fact, get this, you're not even going to know at what time I'm going to come to you. Bang, the hammer's coming down. Now, folks, what we've been seeing, obviously, every single time, the theme of this particular church is it is flat out dead, flat out stinky dead. But because Jesus Christ, and they're playing games, saying they're alive, and they got this reputation. He says, are you kidding me? We've been seeing in the Greek every single time. It literally says, you exist every single day as a dead, rotten, stinking corpse. It's bad news city, man. You don't want to emulate this church, this aspect. You want to be the faithful few? We'll get to that, Lord willing, uh, next time. But we're not there yet. Okay, and because Jesus cares for his church, it's his church. He died on the cross for his church, which means a gathering of people called out of this wicked world system to live for him for the world to come. Hello. Okay, he cares about him. And so he's trying to inject, if you will, we use as analogy, the steroids, the six needles into this church. Bang! uh, To bring them back to life. And of course it's going to hurt. That doesn't feel good. Needles in your chest. But he's trying to save this church's life, okay? And the first needle we already saw he jams into this dead church is he is flat out aware of their deadness. Isn't that the funny game we play? As if God can't see in the dark. As if he doesn't know what's going on. You're not hiding anything from him. Hello. The second needle we saw, he jams into this dead church. These steroids, the spiritual steroids, a shot of them to bring them back to life is how to fix their deadness. This is what is so amazing. You talk about being merciful after all God has done for you and I. And we still have the audacity to backslide, to get all worldly, to go back to idolatry. Are you kidding me? I mean, come on. And and then, then... You would think he'd nuke us on the spot, but not God. He is merciful. Get this. He doesn't have to do this, but he does. He shows us a three-step, easy, simple plan. That's right, how to get out of your deadness. It's incredible, Kevin. He tells us, number one, you need to wake up and strengthen. Number two, you need to remember, therefore. That's where we were last week. And number three, you need to obey and repent now. That's it. If you do that, the deadness is gone. This is awesome. This is great news from Jesus. Praise God. There is finally hope on the horizon. The church has turned around. We're getting out of this goofball mess right? And that's what we saw as the problem. We are rejecting his mercy. We refuse to do, even in the American church, folks, what Jesus says to do to fix our deadness. This is why our country continues to go down the tubes. This is why things are so sick and messed up, and it seems like there is no turnaround. This is why even in the church, it seems so dead oftentimes, because we reject his mercy. We refuse to do his three simple, easy step plan. Would you just wake up and strengthen? Would you remember all the good things there? I'm, we've been in Sardis for so long, I haven't even forgotten how many studies. All of this to me, oh, it's merciful, isn't it? He tells us how to get out of this goofball mess. After all he's done, and we still do this, we end up in a dead position. Mercy's over. He ain't gonna let this go on forever. He holds us accountable. The third needle Jesus jams into the church. This is our text today, folks to bring them back to life is he gives them the penalty now. There is a penalty for rejecting his mercy. He gives them the penalty for not fixing. Okay, he just gave you a solution uh, for not fixing your deadness. That's what the verse uh, says there, folks. Verse 3b there in chapter 3 says, but if you do not wake up, I'm not making this up. This is from Jesus. He says, I'm going to come like a thief and you're not going to know what time I'm going to come to you. Literally in the Greek says this, if you Christian should in no wise wake up, I listen, I will sneak up. I will sneak up on you as a thief. And you should no wise know what hour I'm going to sneak up on you. And so what Jesus in a nutshell, folks, is doing here, the way I see in the text here, is he's given this church now the consequences for refusing to repent of their deadness. They needed to realize the importance of what's going on. They need to realize there is a price to pay if you reject his mercy and refuse to do what he says to do to fix the problem. I can't believe he even, if you will, stooped down and gave us the solution. You still want to reject it? Penalty time. This is judgment time here from Jesus Christ, folks. This is mercy is over. The solutions are done. He said all he can say. What else does he have to say? And we still don't get it. And we still refuse to do it. He is not messing around. This is serious stuff. Why? Because God does not want a dead church. Amen. 
How many times does he have to say it? His church is to be a beautiful bride who's excited. Hallelujah. Preacher, bro, I'll get you up here. But anyway, that's right. <laughs> right? He wants us excited. I mean, ladies, I hope I'm not setting you up. Remember the day when you got married? Okay. All right, we better not go there. But <laughs> Remember that? Remember the excitement? You finally made it, man. Anybody, when you were like, I have to counsel this all the time with you, uh, adults in the premarital counseling, it's like, hey, listen, just hang on there. It always, it's always the same story, Mike. They always start, you know, it's like three months before we're getting ready to start our premarital counseling. They're in that happy, googly mode. Hey, I just love me. She loves me. <laughs> and you're sitting there as an adult. You look that look in the eye. And have, you ever, have you learned that when the adults smile at you when you make the news that you get married? It's really not because they're cared about you. <laughs> Shh, Ed, Ed, don't. It's on video. <laughs> They know what's coming. Anyway, so you prepare the best you can. I, t- I tell them, I says, hey, I say, oh, sorry to burst your little bubble here, uh, but you're going to start fighting big time before you get married because all this stress and stuff. It's okay, you'll make it, right? You guys know what I'm talking about? You'll make it, you'll make it. I'm not pointing fingers. But anyway, <laughs> right? And, and it's the same thing. So you, but you finally get there. At least you made it to the day. And at least it's exciting. I mean, you come and you come, you're sitting there, you come down. I, I mean, we do this all the time, right? It's, it's almost even scripted. Everybody knows what to do. When the door is open, and, and the, the, the party, the bridal party's up here. The door is open. And, and the, what's the first thing everybody does? They look, they do two things. They look at the, the, the bride, right? And smile and they go, oh, that's so exciting. Yeah, yeah. And then what's the next thing you do? They look at the groom to see his response. If he hasn't passed out, right? No, seriously, right, isn't that? And he's all up there, he did all that stuff, right? <laughs> Why? Why would God, why would Jesus say, it's hammer time? We are the bride of Jesus Christ. Our groom is the king of kings and the Lord of lords, the master of the universe. We deserve to burn and go straight to hell, every one of us, myself included, but he died on the cross behind this screen. Not that literal, that's figuratively. And we haven't even had the marriage supper of the Lamb yet. We're headed for a marriage ceremony. Can you imagine how the groom would feel if the doors were open and she had to be dragged in here? Whining, complaining, I don't want to spend a kind of stupid ceremony. That's what a church is doing when it's dead in Jesus Christ. Because we are headed for a marriage ceremony. And he wants his bride. Shouldn't she be excited? Woo-hoo! Can't wait to get there, man. Woo! Praise God. God's right there. What do I got to do in these preparations? I can't wait for this ceremony. That's the church that Jesus wants. And that's not what this church is doing. It's a rotten, stinking advertisement. They're a dead, rotten, stinking corpse. Not a beautiful, sweet-smelling bride. Men, how many of you would like it if it was time on your wedding day and they had to usher in a corpse for you to marry? Please say no. Thank you, men. That's what's going on here. It's like, give me a break. No wonder he's saying this. Even though he's given us time to repent. That's what's so amazing. Okay, you're acting like that. You got to be dragged into your marriage ceremony. You could give a rip about Jesus. And he says, on the way that you're doing that. He says, let me, before you, you're almost here. Let me show you how to fix it. You talk about mercy. And yet when he even stoops down and does that. No. That's a flavor of what's going on here. When you refuse to do what he says to do, these three easy, simple steps, that's right, you're going to get it by Jesus Christ himself, and it's nobody to blame but you. And when it happens, you're not going to have a stinking clue. It's judgment time. That's what he says. And you will not know at what time I will come to you. Literally, you should in no wise know. I'm not even going to give you a heads up. I've had it. I'm going to sneak up on you. And this is a loaded statement, man. Uh, It should have totally drove the point home for Sardis because that's exactly what happened to Sardis in history. Somebody snuck up on him and destroyed him in an instant. Let's take a look at that. Now, one of the coolest things about ancient Sardis is not this temple to Artemis. It's what they call the Acropolis. And I want to head up to that little hill right there to take a look at it. Just behind the ruins of ancient Sardis is a high outcropping overlooking the whole region, the Acropolis of ancient Sardis. 
It was there in the year 547 BC that historians say the decisive showdown between the rich Croesus and Cyrus, king of the Persians, took place. All right.